Hello, good evening, guys. How are you? Hello, hello. Hi, Maurice. Hi, how are you? I'm fine, thanks for asking. How about you? How about your day? How was it? Very busy. It was very busy? Yeah. Okay, so do you work tomorrow? No. No? You are going to no. rest? Yes, I rest in the beach. <laughs> are you going to the <laughs> beach tomorrow? Yes, yeah, I go. Okay. That is cool, okay? So you are going to enjoy it, right? So you are going to relax okay. yourself. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Okay, perfect. Well, good evening, everybody. Okay, hope you have had a good day. Okay, so, well, today is a Friday. Then tomorrow we start the weekend and you are going to rest, okay? So we're going to start, guys, with today's agenda. And with today's agenda, we have the warm-up. Then we are going to move to grammar. Today, we are going to talk about the quality department in a company, okay? And we are going to learn vocabulary related to business, all right? We also have the speaking time and we have the quizzes. We are going to have a grammar quiz and a listening quiz as well. And then at the end, we have the wrap-up of the class, okay? So we are going to start with the warm-up and for the warm-up today, we have the following, okay? So this one is a tongue twister, yes? Um, I'm going to say it and then you are going to try to repeat it, okay? So this one goes like this. Betty Butter bought some butter, but she said the butter is bitter. If I put it in my butter, it will make my butter bitter, but a bit of better butter will make my butter better. So it was better, Betty Butter bought a bit of better butter. Yeah? This one is for us to practice the letter B sound, okay? So this one is for us to practice that sound. And, okay, do you have any question? Any question? No? If not, I'm going to ask. Uh, Maurice, you are going to be the first one that is going to say it. Then Pablo, I don't know if Claudia is right there. I don't know if Mariam is there. And Norma, let me know through a message, okay, on the chat. Yeah. So, but Maurice, you are going to go yeah. first. Thank you, Claudia. Okay. Yes. Okay. Uh, better or about some better, but she said, be better bitter. Mm -hmm. If I put it in my better, it will make it my better bitter. Mm -hmm. But I bit a better butter will I make my better better. Yes. So I was better bit very other bow pick up of a better butter. Okay, it was good, Maurice. We still need to practice, okay? But yeah. it was good, okay? So try to okay. practice it, okay? okay. Uh, Claudia, can you please continue? Very butter bought some butter, but she said the butter's bitter. If I put, put it in my butter, it will make my butter bitter. Yes. But... A bit of better butter will make my butter better. So it was better, very butter, both a bit of better butter. Okay. Very good. Okay. Yes. Okay. Let me see. Um, do we have, let me see. Do we have uh, Wendy? Are you there? Wendy is not there. Okay, Pablo, are you there? Good evening, teacher. Good evening. Yes, okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, can you please say it? Um, tell me why. Yes, say the tongue twister, Pablo. 
Uh, excuse me. Yeah. Okay, so can you please say the tongue twister? Ah, okay, okay. Mm -hmm. uh, very valuable, some bottles, and what says, she say, say the bottle beer, and if I put in it in my bottle, mm -hmm. it will make my bottle beer, but I beat of better bottle, what will make my bottle better? So it was very, 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 of very, 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 Okay, thank you, Pablo. Yes, okay. All right, so then um, let's continue, okay? Let's continue. And well, we are going to start by talking about uh, the following, okay? So guys, what is an idiom? What is an idiom? Who knows what is an idiom? Uh -huh. What is an idiom? Who has an idea of idiom in English? No? No idea? Uh, modismo, algo así. Very good. Modismos. That is correct. Okay. So an idiom is un modismo. Okay, that we have in different languages, right? So, but today we are going to learn some of them in English, but those modismos or those idioms are related to business, yeah? All of them are related to business. Now, um, can you give me an example of an idiom from your first language that means Spanish? What is an idiom in our language? What is um, un modismo in our language. Mm -hmm. No idea? No? Okay. So then we are going to learn some today, but in English. Okay. And you will see. So in this case, uh, we have from one to eight and also from A to H, yeah? So the first one that we are going to um, study is this one, okay? Uh, let me see, is actually go, in this case, um, go back to a square one, yeah? So that means, esa es una frase junta, guys, es un modismo. Go back to a square one, Significa empezar algo. Let's go back to a square one. Empezar algo de nuevo. Yeah. Go back to a square one. For example, let's say that you are discussing a project and the project is not good at all. And you say, no, empecemos de nuevo. Entonces aquí tenemos que decir, no. Let's go back to a square one. Uh -huh. Instead of saying, okay, instead of saying, cuando yo le digo instead of saying, significa en lugar de, okay, instead of saying, instead of, en lugar de, okay, instead of saying, um, let's begin or let's start again. En lugar de decir, let's start again, como empezar algo de nuevo, usamos modismos. Why? because it's better, your uh, vocabulary improves, right? The way that you speak improves, yeah? And you sound more natural, that's the purpose. Then we also have number two. So what do you think number two is? Bring, uh -huh. Any, no idea? No? Okay. So it is going to be letter H. Bring something to the table. Okay. Bring something to the table. 
And what is the meaning of bringing something to the table? What do you think the meaning is? Any idea of bringing something to the table? You know, whenever, uh, whenever you apply to um, a bilingual position, okay, this is a common question that uh, the interviewer does, all right? So, esa es una pregunta bien común. Le dicen a uno, what can you bring to the table? Esa es una pregunta que siempre se la van a hacer cuando se esté aplicando a una posición en inglés. Why? Because they asked you this. Quieren saber qué puede usted aportar. ¿Qué puedes aportar? ¿Qué puedes traer? Si lo traducimos literalmente es qué puedes traer a la mesa. Pero como no lo traducimos literalmente, lo interpretamos, ¿qué puedes aportar? What can you bring to the table? ¿Ya? Yeah. So, and it's your opportunity to shine, right? Y ahí usted se luce. Uh -huh. So now, number three. So what is um, the one that goes with number three? Uh -huh. In this case, any idea? Let me see. Uh, 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 number three, and there are Could the name? Lost? Uh, oh, okay. Could your no. loss? Yes. Okay. Letter G. Okay. And what is the meaning of this? Mm -hmm. What do you think? Uh -huh. No idea? Uh -huh. No. Well, in this case, cut your losses, guys, is going to be like saying, um, for example, whenever you want to probably, um, whenever you have a lot of possibilities, right? But you need to be sure of what you are saying. Yeah, you need to be sure of what you are saying. You need to trust, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. What about number four? What do you think number four is? Number four. Mm -hmm. No idea? Okay, let's leave that one till the end. What about number five, hit? Mm -hmm. Letter D. Okay, so hit the nail on the head. Okay, so in this case, that is correct. And that means como dar en el punto exacto. You hit the nail on the head. Uh -huh. Cuando se le dice, diste en el, en el punto, right? So you hit the nail on the head. Uh -huh. Correct. What about keep? Uh -huh. The ball rolling, let us see. Okay. Keep the ball rolling. And what is the meaning of that? What do you think? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Keep the ball rolling is like keeping, um, I would say, a situation going on. But in this case, on these, um, on these actually idioms, that is not like the the. Uh, I would say the pair, right? Is not keep the ball rolling, but we can say that as well, okay? Um, number seven, what do you think 
goes with a start. This one, I'm going to remove it, okay? A start. Letter B. Letter B. A start off on the right foot. Como en español, vamos a comenzar con el pie derecho. Something positive. Uh -huh. Let's start you, this new project uh, off on the right foot, right? Yes. And what about number eight? Think. Letter F. Yes, okay, so it is going to be think outside the box. That one is the most common one, I think, that we hear sometimes, right? You need to think outside the box. That's something really common, right? Even in Spanish, right? Tiene que pensar distinto. Tiene que pensar con originalidad. Uh -huh. con, cuando le dicen eso, es que le están diciendo tiene que pensar fuera de la cajita. Yeah, and that is true. Whenever you are doing something uh, new, right? Or when you are learning or when you are planning something, you need to think outside the box. Mm -hmm. That is correct. And now, what about uh, keep and get? Those are the two that are missing. Mm -hmm. someone on their toes. Uh -huh. This one and get the ball rolling. So get the ball rolling means a start, okay? Como comenzar. Yeah, let's get the ball rolling. Vamos a comenzar. Yeah. Keep someone on their toes is like uh, keep someone um, alert. Ok, mantener a alguien como alerta y también mantener a alguien en contacto acerca de algo. Yeah. So those are idioms that we can use related to business. Ok. Uh -huh. And remember, the most common ones, think outside the box, pensar fuera de la caja, es decir, pensar con originalidad. Ya. Yeah. Bring something to the table que puedes aportar. I can bring to the table my patience. I can bring to the table my, uh, what, my, um, my writing skills, etc. Your abilities, right, at the end. Uh -huh. uh, let's get the ball rolling. Vamos a comenzar. In a meeting, let's get the ball rolling. Empecemos. Those are idioms, right? And you are going to listen to some of them in uh, whenever you are speaking with native um, speakers, right? They use a lot, a lot, a lot of them. All right. So then, um, in our language, right, which is Spanish, we also have we have idioms. We have. We have idioms. For example, a common idiom that we can have in our language is going to be, whenever it's raining a lot, okay? Como decimos, cuando está lloviendo mucho. We say, uh -huh. yeah. Decimos, está lloviendo a cantar, o está lloviendo un montón, o decimos, um, Gran tor tormentón, right? Son, son dichos que uno dice. In Spanish también los tenemos. Okay? And in English as well, the same thing. Okay? Well, let's move. Now we are going to talk about this. Agreeing and disagreeing. Yeah, so as you can see, we have a couple of phrases for you to use whenever you agree or disagree. Agree es concordar y disagree es que usted no está de acuerdo con algo o con alguien. Yeah, so we have 
some expressions. Absolutely means, por supuesto, absolutamente, right? Absolutely. Then we also, ha uh, also have absolutely disagree. Absolutely disagree means completamente en desacuerdo. I absolutely disagree. Yeah. Now, then we also have, I totally agree with you. I totally agree with you. Yo totalmente uh, concuerdo contigo, right? So I totally agree with you. Mm -hmm. Something positive. Mm -hmm. That works for me. That works for me. What is the meaning of that expression? ¿Qué significa that works for me? Está bien por mí. Está bien para mí. Uh -huh. para. para mí. For example, um, let's say, okay, a context is, for example, if I, if I say to you, right, hey, you know what? We are going to have the meeting tomorrow at 10 a.m. And you say, okay, that, that works for me. Usted está aceptando, you are accepting that, right? So that works for me. Yeah, es como decir, sí, está bien. En lugar de decir, it's okay, right? So those phrases are for you to improve your vocabulary. So you must be joking. You must be joking. Uh -huh. What is the meaning of that, that expression? You must be joking. It's like saying, debes estar bromeando. Whenever someone gives you a probably bad news, right? So you say, mm, you must be joking. Uh -huh. You must be joking, right? Then we also have this one. Actually, I don't really agree. Actually is not actualmente, okay? So actually means en realidad, okay? ¿Cómo se dice actualmente, guys? How do you say actualmente in English? No okay. idea. No. Actually, no es actualmente. Actualmente en inglés se dice currently. ¿Ok? No se vaya a confundir y por decir actualmente va a decir actually, porque no se dice actually, se dice currently. ¿Qué significa actually? Actually means en realidad. Por eso es que usted escucha a bastantes personas decir quizás esta frase. Actually, I mean this. Actually, bla, bla, bla. Porque es como decir en realidad. No es actualmente. Ok. So actually I don't really agree. Es decir. En realidad. No estoy de acuerdo. I'm not sure about that. No estoy seguro acerca de eso. That might be true. But. Es cuando usted va a decir su pensamiento. That might be true. Eso podría ser cierto, pero, y usted dice su idea. For example, that might be true, but I didn't see your email. Okay? An example. You are uh, making uh, um, the contrast, right? Yes, you are right. Sí, tienes razón. Yes, you are right. Sí, tienes razón. Yes, you are right. And the last one, it says, you are right to a certain extent, but, eso es como cuando se dice, sí, tienes razón, hasta cierto punto, pero, y dice su opinión. You are right to a certain extent, but, y dice su idea. 
¿Ya? Sí tienes razón hasta cierto punto. Pero, y dice su idea. ¿Ok? Very good. All right. So now, what we are going to do is the following. I'm going to give you, uh, well, I'm going to, to say those sentences, ¿ok? And you need to use the phrases that we have right here. Yeah, and you are going to tell me if you agree or disagree. Yeah, with those phrases. Yeah, you decide which one is the one that you are going to use. Yeah, so number one, outsourcing is a good thing for companies and economies. Agree or disagree? Uh -huh. Outsourcing. What do you think? Mm -hmm. Outsourcing is a good thing for companies and economies. Yeah. What do you think? Um, I, yeah. I think for me, I disagree. You disagree. Okay. All right. It's okay. The outsourcing, guys, outsourcing means subcontratación. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh -huh. mm, well. Well, I think that I I totally agree. Yes, it's a good thing. Mm, but for companies, okay, for companies, but not for the employees, right? Mm -hmm. Now, number two, smoking should be banned everywhere. What is the meaning of banned? Means prohibido. What do you think? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely. Agree. Absolutely agree. Okay. Yes. Number three. The best way to learn a language is to live in the country where it's spoken. Disagree. You disagree? All right. Yeah. Uh -huh. Okay, number four. If you want to get, listen to this one, number four. If you want to get a good job, experience and qualifications are very important. Uh -huh. I agree. Agree. Okay, you agree. Okay. We can also use other expressions. For example, that might be true, but, okay, that might be true. Puede que eso sea cierto. But, pero, but, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. For example, that might be true, but you also need more skills, right? Well, in this case, I will say you also need soft skills, not only hard skills, but also soft skills, right? Not only experience and qualifications, right? Now, what about number five? You can never trust salesmen. Mm -hmm. You can never trust them. Agree or disagree? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. What do you think about 
Oh, this one. You can never trust salesmen. I disagree. Mm -hmm. What about you? Disagree. You disagree? Okay. Number six. It is easier to speak English on the phone than face to face. Mm -hmm. What do you think? It is easier to speak English on the phone than face to face. Disagree for me. You disagree? Yeah. Yeah, it's the same at the end, I think. All right. It's the same, the same thing. Number seven. People who drink and drive should receive lighter punishments. What is the meaning of lighter punishments? Castigos menos eh, fuertes. Okay, más leves. Castigos más leves. People who drink and drive should receive lighter punishments. Do you agree or disagree? No, I disagree. Yeah, we totally disagree on this one right now. Now, number eight. A spam is irritating. A spam, those emails, right? Those messages, those things, those ads, a spam, uh huh? Mm, well, it, for me, it's, it doesn't matter, right? But what about for you? A spam is irritating. Agree or disagree? Mm -hmm. A spam is you disagree. Mm -hmm. Okay, and the last one. If you want to be a successful businessman, you need to be born with certain character traits. What do you think about that? Mm -hmm. Yeah. If you want to be a successful businessman, you need to be born with certain character traits. Yes or no? Agree or disagree? Character traits are rasgos, right? Um, ciertos rasgos que uno debe de tener de nacimiento. Okay, what do you think? Uh -huh. You disagree. You disagree? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, yes, I disagree as well. Because you can get uh, skills by training them, right? There are many skills that you need to be successful um, on business. But yeah, you need, you need to have certain character traits to be successful uh, in business, right? If not, probably you cannot be successful in that area, right? Mm -hmm. You need to be outgoing, you need to be talkative, right? You need to be friendly, you need to be self-confident, right? In order for you to have success in that area. Yeah. Okay. Very good. So now let's move. Let's move and let's continue with this, right? Vocabulary related to quality department okay i think that in your company you do have quality department yeah 
I'm pretty sure that some, some of you do have this department, right, in your company, quality department. So today we are going to base, base our class on that department. Number one, what do you think we evaluate when it comes to quality department? What do we evaluate? Or what do they evaluate? Uh -huh. They evaluate job performance. Yes, right? Your job performance. Yes. Even in, in um, not only in a company, in classes as well, your job performance is evaluated, right? Number two, what do you give? We give, what do you think? Negative impact, goals, stress, useful feedback. Uh -huh. Negative being goals. Goals, um, no, in this case, no. We give useful feedback. If you if you belong to the quality department, I don't know if you, some of you, right, uh, belongs to the quality department, um, you give useful feedback to the employees, right? Se da una retroalimentación que ayude al empleado. Si usted pertenece al departamento de calidad. I don't know if, if you actually belong to, to that department. No sé si aquí alguien pertenece a ese departamento. But yes, you give useful feedback. And if not, you receive, I hope, okay? Espero que ustedes reciban una retroalimentación que les ayude. Yeah? So what about number three? We have set and meet. What do we set and what do we meet? What do you think? A, B, letter B. Letter B. In this case, yes. We set goals and we meet goals. In your company, you set goals. Every single day and every yeah. single month, you set goals. And you need to meet your goals, right? Because it's part of your job performance. Yes. Then, number four. We have and we cost. Mm -hmm. So we can have a negative impact or we can have a negative effect, all right? But we can also have a positive impact and we can also have uh -huh, a positive effect, okay? It depends. Mm -hmm. And Cause is stress. Okay. Cause is stress. Sometimes many uh, different probably situations can cause stress. Yes. Okay. Okay. So now let's continue. And let me ask you, what is quality? For you guys, what is quality? How do you define quality? What is it? Give me a definition of quality. What is quality? Not uh, calidad, because we know that quality means calidad. But what is quality? What is quality for you? Mm -hmm. When we... Uh -huh. Give me examples, right? Because whenever we go to eat, whenever we go to buy, we never, whenever we go to uh, a class, what you expect is quality, right? At work, you expect quality. But what is quality? Mm -hmm. Maybe things we can do. <laughs> okay, things that we can do, all right, yes. And in which ways can we do those things with quality, right? So, and quality means, yeah. Uh, Carla, help us reading the definition. Mm, quality control is the process by which products, service are tested 
and measure to ensure they meet a standard. Through this process, a business can evaluate, maintain, and improve product quality. Thank you, and that is correct, right? So quality is basically something uh, that we call process, right? So quality is a process in which products and services are tested and measured, yeah? To ensure they meet a standard. How? How do we do that? Uh -huh. Through surveys, right? Through feedback. Uh -huh. So in this process, a business can evaluate, can maintain, and can improve the product quality, right? Quality is um, the process, basically, right? So we need to do everything with quality, the best possible way. Mm -hmm. So quality is doing things in the best possible way to ensure we meet the standards. And in your company, you do that, right? because you need to give results. You need to meet goals. You need to present your results, right? In your meetings, I'm pretty sure that some of you present the results of the month, right? Etc. yeah. So then why is quality really important in a business? Why is quality important in a business? Why is quality important in any place? Why? Why do you think quality is important? Mm -hmm. Why? Uh -huh. Because it's important, but the client. Because it is important to, My, to maintain para, para the client. relations. Yeah, to maintain the relations with the clients. Yes, and that is true. That's why quality is really important in a business, right? Yes, of course. Because if you don't receive a good service, you won't come back, right, to a place. Yeah. Of course. So then quality is really important in a business, right? In this case, in your company as well. Quality is important, right, etc. cetera. Mm -hmm. So now we also have quality control. Yeah, so in this case, it is important because of customer loyalty, right? So, you know, is what we were saying. If you do not receive good service, you won't come back to a place, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's important because you can repeat business, right? And in that way, you create alliances. Yeah, what is the meaning of alliances? Alliance. We also can mention that quality is important because we can get customer referrals, right? Referidos, los mismos clientes refieren, right? Quality is really important. Now, it also improves safety. You feel safe by buying a product because of quality. It improves the market position, right? Why do you prefer, this is just an example. Why do you prefer, uh, let's say iPhones? Why do you prefer Samsung? because they have positioned 
themselves in the market by doing what? By doing things, by selling things with quality. Uh -huh. And then we also have that it reduces liability risk, right? Liability risk. Yes. So um, then we have different things, right? Um, basically, why quality is important, guys. Yes. Yeah, so reduce liability risk, okay? Reduce el riesgo. Ok, reduce eh, el riesgo, basically, reduce el riesgo. Uh -huh. So, then, let's move. It's very important to mention that we have quality assurance and we also have quality control. But sometimes in, in our companies, right, we just have quality. That is the quality department. But within the quality department, we need to have quality assurance and quality control. And what is the difference between both? Um, Maurice, help us reading both of them, please. Okay. Quality, quality assurance versus quality control. Yeah. Quality assurance. Quality assurance you is a proactive approach of quality with focuses on preventing the effect of the process label. Mm -hmm. And quality control is quality control QC is the reactive approach of quality with work by finding the effect of the product itself. Itself, okay. Perfect, thank you. So the quality assurance, basically in, uh, in the companies, guys, um, sometimes they just have one position, which is QA. And QA does everything, right? So uh, the quality department needs to prevent the defects and they also need to find the defects if there are some, right? So that is basically the difference. Quality assurance, they prevent. And the quality control, they find. If quality assurance didn't uh, probably uh, notice it, right? Hmm? That is the difference. Yeah. Quality assurance and quality control. Okay. Let's move. And now we also have quality aspects yeah we have quality aspects and we have a couple of uh words right there okay um let me see claudia can you please help us reading the list that we have everything is claudia there well juan jose Quality aspect, performance, how well the product performs its main function, features, mm -hmm. additional parts or char characteristics huh. that the product offer. Okay. Reliability, yeah. how well the product continues to perform without breaking downs. Okay. Technical durability durability, yeah. how long the product lasts before becoming technically obsolete. Yes. Serviceability, how easy the product is to ma maintain and repair. Aesthetic, aesthetics, I don't know, <laughs> that yeah, look, yeah. okay, the look at and feel of the product. Yeah. Perceived quality, the customer's judgment of a product's level of quality. Value for money, 
what the product does in relation to the price paid for it. Yes. So, um, Juan, this one is going to be characteristics. Char characteristics. Ha, yes, characteristics, okay. Uh, real Reliability. Reliability. Perfect. And breakdowns. Breakdowns. Perfect, okay. So, guys, whenever we want to buy something, we evaluate those quality aspects. The performance, the features, the reliability, the technical durability, the service ability, the aesthetics, perceived quality, and value for money. All of them. We do evaluate all of that. Yeah, so the features are really important sometimes for you whenever you buy a computer, whenever you buy a cell phone, a car, the characteristics, right? And then you also evaluate. Uh, we sometimes evaluate all of that. Sometimes, no, right? We actually think in, in different ways. So probably you evaluate features and the perceived quality. Maybe some of them, some of you, sorry, you evaluate uh, the reliability and the value for money, right? Or probably you evaluate the performance and the perceived quality or value for money. Uh -huh. And sometimes we evaluate all of that to take the decision to buy something, right? Or to continue, yeah, using something, et cetera. Okay, so now I will list, all right, I will list sentences taken from product descriptions and I want you to name which aspect each sentence refers to from the list, from this list, okay, that we have above. So if we evaluate, okay, the first sentence that says, we guarantee five years of, how do you say this number? 100,000. Okay. Kilometers of trouble-free motoring, what are we evaluating? Performance. Performance, okay. What about this number two? No other brand gives better performance in this price category. Mm -hmm. value for money value for money if we say it has beautiful lines aesthetics yes that is correct if we say it has the latest engine technology features features the characteristics the parts right and the last one, customer surveys give us top marks for quality compared to other leading car makes, makers in this case. Huh? What do you think that Perceived is? Perceived quality. Perceived quality. That is correct. Uh -huh. Perfect. Exactly. So guys, in this case, let me ask you once again, Jose, why is quality important? Uh, to keep a high level uh -huh. of, com, uh, how do you say, competencia? Competency? To keep a high, high level of competency in the market. Perfect. Uh -huh. Excellent. Okay. Very good. Yeah. That is correct. Okay, guys. Let's move. Okay. Do you have any question? Any doubt? Okay. Let's move. Okay. Now, this is for you to work individually. Okay. Think about the last time you visited a restaurant and let's complete the following survey, okay? But first, uh, we need to fill out the spaces, okay? All right, 
So we were, what do you think? Mm -hmm. Uh -huh. Yes. And what is the meaning of promptly? No sé si rápidamente o sin demora. Correct. Sin demora, okay? Sin demora. Very good. Number two. The server was uh, there to take our order quickly. Perfect. Okay. What about number three? The server was friendly and patient when taking out an order. Excellent. Okay. Uh, the only observation, pronunciation. Uh, patient. Pay. Patient. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Number four. Dining. Perfect. Dining? Uh, yeah. All right. Um, okay. And what about number seven? I think the fourth is dishes. Yes, that is correct. Dishes, right? And number seven? Dining. Dining. Okay. Mm -hmm. La cena, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so now let me ask you. Think about the last time you visited a restaurant, okay? Think about the last time. Mm -hmm. And you should actually uh, give, right, um, a score in this case. As you can see right here, we have one as strongly disagree two disagree three agree and four is strongly agree mm -hmm. okay this is just for you to, to think about it okay this is just for you to think about it yeah so nelly is there a quality department in your workplace no 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 okay so what about in your workplace, George? Can you repeat the, the question, please? Yes. Is there a quality department in your workplace? Yes, teacher. Okay. And do they monitor and evaluate your procedures? Mm, yes. Okay. Perfect, thank you. What about in your workplace? And let me see, Carlos Vladimir. Yes, teacher. Yes, is there a quality department in your workplace? The departments. Yeah, a quality department. But I think that in your, in your work, yes. Yes. Yeah, I think that yes. Okay, and in your workplace, Juan? Yes. Mm -hmm. And do they monitor and evaluate your procedures? Yes, uh, they are. Uh, when they build uh, some software or program, they run a QA environment to test and monitoring and evaluate. Mm -hmm. Okay, very good. Okay, yeah, I think that um, sometimes it, it is necessary, depending on the business, right? It depends on the business. But sometimes it's really necessary to have the quality department. Yeah, okay. Okay, so let's move, right? So what do you think about these guys? Are satisfaction surveys a good way to make sure procedures are followed in a company, not only in the restaurant, okay, but also in any company. Do you think that um, surveys are 
uh, actually a good way to make sure procedures. Mm -hmm. To make sure that the procedures are followed correctly. Do you think that a survey um, actually helps? Mm -hmm. For me, for me, it's very good. Uh, yes. Like a... I think that yes, right? Yes. I think that, that surveys, they do help. They do. But sometimes probably no, right? If there is not a quality department, so there is no purpose on having surveys in a company, right? Mm -hmm. And do you consider placing posters about procedures in strategic places will help employees follow those procedures? Do you consider that placing posters, guys, will help? Um, I think that it will help you like getting training, but also posters probably, right? But you need to be trained. Mm -hmm. But it depends on the industry as well, because I think that restaurants should have, right? posters about procedures in strategic places. Most of, of the businesses, right? In some places I saw posters about a safety, mm -hmm. safety procedures. Yeah, that is correct. Yes, those are the most common ones that we can see, right? And, and that is good. That is good. Uh -huh. Okay, guys. So now let's move. And this is for you to work with your partners, okay? But first of all, I'm going to take the attendance. Okay, I'm going to take the attendance because it's already nine. Um, Carlos Albel Alberto Castro. Carlos Alberto Castro. Carlos Vladimir Rodriguez. Present teacher. Thank you. Claudia Maria Guerrero. Present. Thank you. Daisy Elizabeth Recinos. Daisy. Eduardo Franco. Eduardo. Emerson Ulises Monroy. Jorge Antonio Sanchez. Jorge. Present teacher. Yeah, thank you. Jose Bernardo. Yeah. Present teacher. Juan Jose, thank you. Yeah, Juan Jose, I saw you. Present. Karen Janet. Karen, Carla Sofía, Kenia Elizabeth. Thank you. Marian Scarlett. Marian. Marina Jensi. Thank you. Mauricio Antonio. Present teacher. Thank you. Nelly Lilibeth. Present. Thank you. Norma Patricia. Norma, Pablo Adalberto. Present. Thank you. Tatiana Ivón. Tatiana Ivón. Wendy Maricela. And Jonathan Present. Roberto. Thank you, Wendy. Jonathan Present. Roberto. Okay. Thank you. Okay, guys. Let me see. Perfect. All right. So now let's continue. And what we are going to continue with, guys, is the following. Okay. So we are going to work on this. So what we need to do, you and your team, uh, you need to look for a definition. What is a dispenser? Yeah, what is dirt? What is designated? What is sink? What is uh, thoroughly? Yeah. I need to look this, uh, those words in the dictionary and give me examples, all right? Give me a sentence. Give me uh, a sentence using the word. That is what I need. First of all, you need to look for the, for the meaning. And then I need to create a sentence using the word to make sure that you understood the, the, the word and how to use it in the sentence, in the context, yeah? 
So we are going to work on this. Please, uh, if you can participate, let's go to the breakout rooms. And if not, please, let's stay here, okay? And if you cannot participate, let your partner know that you cannot participate, okay? So your partner will ask for help, right? And if you need, guys, I need, if you need me to move you to another breakout room, please ask for help, okay? Hmm. To found uh, what is the each words dispenser dealer design and sync thoroughly, and then we make a uh, sentences using the each word. Okay. Okay. If you want, start uh, found this these words in the dictionary or, or... Tenemos que hacer una oración para eso. Yes. Tú lo estás proyectando ahí. Yes. Ok. Fish. Word. Please. 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 Y el otro es pero que Eh, y a la par no podíamos poner ahí lo que significa cada uno y después hacemos la oración. Yes. Pensar, pensador. Yes. 
Sociedad. Designar. Hundir. What? Hundir. H, hundir. No es fregadero. Ajá. ¿Cómo es? Fregadero, sí. o sea, como sí. lavatrastos, no sé. ¿Qué dije ahí? Yes. Fregadero, bueno, ok. Uh -huh. Totalmente, creo. Minus, minuciosamente. Oh. Minuciosa. Mente, sí. Ok. Ok. Como la primera okay. opción. Pueden ser. I have an imagine defensive cook. Tengo una máquina que de, de piensa Coca-Cola. I have this person. I have a this. machine. A machine. Uh -huh. I have a this machine in my restaurant. Okay. Uh -huh. so. Yeah. Yeah, you should say, yeah. In my kitchen, in my kitchen, I have a little plate. In your tengo plato place? sucio. En mi cocina tengo platos sucios. Okay, um, you show. Clean every dirt, every dirt in the kitchen. Mm -hmm. In the kitchen, I have you should, you should clean. clean many cleaning. You should clean every dirt. Oh, uh huh, uh huh. Está bien, bien. Cleaning all dear kitchen. I The server is 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 trying to attend that table. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Uh -huh. uh, Designated. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. Designated. Yeah. Yes. The server is. The server. Yes. Is uh, ready to attend. Okay. Uh, that yeah. table. Okay, a mesa. The table. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Pink, verdadero. Um, I... In the... In the sink. You have to wash the dishes in the sink. On the sink, I think. Uh-huh. What? The watch. In the sink. Okay. Okay. Totalmente. I take the order. The order. Probably. Take the order. Yo tomo la orden minuciosamente. Oh, 
¿Qué mapa es más? Sí. Very good. Okay. All right. So let's go. Okay. Let's go to the main room. Yeah. Okay. 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 So let's see. I think that in this case, Maurice, I think that uh, Nelly is going to present. Okay. So from Jonathan, Carla, Sofia, Wendy. Yes, can you present your sentences? We have only two. Okay, yes, present the ones that you have, okay? Only. <laughs> okay. Mm, dispenser. A person whose job is to prepare medicine and give or sell them pit. Okay. Okay. Uh -huh. air, air or system like it does it that has gotten on the surface or something so so as your skin. Okay. <laughs> okay. Thank you, Carla. Yes. Both are correct, okay. And Nelly? Okay. Okay. I have a dispenser machine in my restaurant. Mm -hmm. It should clean all dirt in the kitchen. The server is designed to attend the ta that table. Mm -hmm. You have to wash the dishes on the sink, and mm -hmm. I take the other throw away. Okay, the observation is on designated. Okay, designated, uh -huh. designated. Yeah, the pronunciation, right? Perfect. Oh, Thank okay. you, Kelly. Okay. Yeah, but it was mm -hmm. good. All of them are perfect. Excellent. Mm -hmm. uh, George, Juan, Karen. We don't finish this. Oh, okay, but uh, present what you have. It's okay. Well, we have only only two words. Okay. Uh, the first one is dispenser. All right. Yeah, and dispenser is a person that dispenses something. Mm -hmm. And the example is the dispenser put in orders the balls in the supermarket. Okay. Um, next, uh, dirt. Dirt is a substance like a soil. And the example is his face was covered in covered in dirt. Okay. Very good. Yes. Those are correct. Okay. Perfect. Thank you. All right, guys, so let's move. And right now what we're going to do is that we need, um, well, the ones that want to participate, uh, can you please raise your hand? Yes, guys, this is going to be, just speaking, we're going to have three uh, students participating. Okay, this is for you to uh, speak, all right? Um, so what we are going to do, we are going to choose a topic, all right, you will see it. You will see the options that we have. We are going to choose a topic and you need to talk about that topic one minute. Yeah, that's what you are going to do. So I need three volunteers and please raise your hand. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thank you, George. Thank you, Juan. Thank you, uh, Jose. All right. So, yes. All right. So, let's see. Um, George, you go first, then Juan, and then Jose, okay? So, George, we are going to pick your topic, all right? So, as you can see. Okay. Okay. 
Okay. What do you prefer? Sleep or go out and why? Yeah. You have one minute to explain why. Yeah. Well, I prefer um, sleep. Mm -hmm. And I don't know, uh, first one, because um, my work is very hard and I wake up early every day. And on weekend, uh, when I have uh, for time to relax, I, I need to relax and I need to sleep. Okay. But when, when I was young, and I love sleep. Yeah. Um, I remember that when I go to the high school and uh, I go uh, to class at 1 p.m. in the noon. And sometimes I walk up at 11 or 12 in the middle. In, in, in the middle. Okay. Yeah. Uh, always I, I sleep and I, I prefer sleep. You prefer to sleep. Okay. Yes. So thank you, George. Uh, observation, simple pass. Okay. I went. And we do not say in the noon. We say at noon. At noon. Okay. Okay. All right. Perfect. Thank you, George. Uh, Juan, your topic. Okay. So, all right, let's. Do you have an idea about that? Yes, in Spanish, yes. <laughs> okay, but in, in English, okay. All right, so here we go. Okay, procrastination is when someone have to do something important and that person don't do it and mm -hmm. do something less important to do the really important. Mm -hmm. For example, if I have to say, if I have to do some uh, work or some a task and before to do that, I spend my time with my phone or playing some, some game mm -hmm. or sleeping or doing something, something else. And I, um i i don't do in the correct moment that i have to do okay what i have to do okay what i have okay thank you okay thank you juan all right so observation um this is for everybody okay whenever we use before guys before is a preposition, okay? So before should always be followed by ing. So that means before doing that. Before to do that, no, never, okay? Before doing that, before waking up, before eating, before sleeping, before um, drinking water, before uh, studying, before uh, copying, before whatever, yeah? Whatever thing, but it is ing. I mean, whatever verb, okay? In this case, verb in ing. Never to, never, never. That is a rule, okay? For example, antes de dormir, before sleeping. Antes de comer, before eating. Take this medicine before eating. Yeah, ING. Okay, Jose. Uh, let me see. Yes. Uh, let me clear this. Okay, Jose, let me see. Your topic is going to be the following. Oh. Um, okay. Okay, Ho uh, Jose, how has the internet changed the way people communicate? Yeah? Okay. Okay. 
uh, the internet changed the people to communicate, which he thought uh, making easily. Mm -hmm. the, that means that we can talk to someone in another country more easy and cheapest than mm -hmm. before because so este, because before we had to make a call and that was very expensive but now with the internet we can make call by using whatsapp or something else like messenger or including video calls and now we can do conferences like this mm -hmm. that we do not have to stay in a especially place mm -hmm. we we are each each one in our house and that's okay. easiest okay and that is easiest Easy. okay in this case it is going to and that is easier okay easier okay easier okay in uh, a special place okay especially no special special place yes okay. uh -huh. and easier not more easy okay okay very good okay excellent somebody else that wants to participate nobody guys you should uh i would say yes you should see if you are uh, able to to maintain right your conversation at least for one minute you should try yourself you need to get out of your comfort zone you need to have this self-confidence yeah okay so right now let's move and we are going to take the listening okay the listening uh quiz yeah let's take the listening and I'm seeing, okay, let me speak for you, okay? For the ones that probably do not have um, the spreadsheet uh, handy right now. Let me see, where is it? Um, okay. Okay, so there you go, guys. This one is the link, and the passcode is going to be listening as always. Okay, listening as always. Let me know once you are in so I can play the audio. Um, okay, Daisy. Okay, ready? Hi, teacher. Hi, Daisy. How are you? I Good. thank you. Okay, great. Okay. Um, in in my house. In your house. Uh, oh, my baby. Okay, that's good. Okay, good to see you. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Okay. All right, perfect. So let's see. Uh, let's start, guys, with the uh, listening time. Okay. So here we go. Oh, give me one second. I'm going to share that. Okay. Let me see. Okay. Okay, here we go. Hey, James. <gasps> James, what's wrong? You don't look well at all. What's going on? What's up? Oh, <clears throat> I think I just have a bad cold. That's no, all. you don't look like you have a bad cold. You look 
terrible. What? You, your skin. Oh my gosh. Look, it looks a little purple. What? What are you talking about? Oh no, James. Oh no. Let me look. Oh, look right here, right here. Here it is. It talks about it. I saw this on the internet. It says right here what, what? you got. Yeah, it says if you have purple skin. Purple? You've got purple skin. Look in the mirror. It says it is a sign of a rare disease called the Burafa virus. Burafa virus? I've never heard of that. Well, Come on. You're t you just t aren't well read like I am. <laughs> look. Just have a look. What? Oh. What is this website? Come on, look. The owner is a well-known psychic named Dr. Simon. A, a psychic? What in the world makes this psychic a medical expert anyway? Well, um, I don't know, but he says on his blog that he loves working with animals. Animals? What about humans? Forget it. I mean... <clears throat> oh, no! What? Wait, wait, wait. Let me look. Let me look. <coughs> oh, no. He what? He said something about that cough. Oh, it's just a simple cough. No, it's not. It's another symptom for the Barafa virus. You cough twice. Not once or three times. You cough twice. And that's a clear sign of the disease. That's you nonsense. Have, you, you have the Barafa virus. It says so right here. So what else does the website say? Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> what? Oh, James. <laughs> what? It says that once the cough sets in, the person only has only, only, oh, only a week to live. I've had enough. You're spending too much time online. Okay. Okay, here we go again, all right? Hey, James. James, what's wrong? You don't look well at all. What's going on? What's up? Oh, <clears throat> I think I just have a bad cold. That's no, all. you don't look like you have a bad cold. You look terrible. What? You, your skin. Oh my gosh. Look, it looks a little purple. What? What are you talking about? Oh no, James. Oh no. Let me look. Oh, look right here, right here. Here it is. It talks about it. I saw this on the internet. It says right here what, what? you got. Yeah, it says if you have purple skin. Purple? You've got purple skin. Look in the mirror. It says it is a sign of a rare disease called the Burafa virus. Burafa virus? I've never heard of that. Come well, on. You're t you just t aren't well read like I am. <laughs> look. Just have a look. What? Oh. What is this website? Come on, look. The owner is a well-known psychic named Dr. Simon. A, a psychic? What in the world makes this psychic a medical expert anyway? Well, um, I don't know, but he says on his blog that he loves working with animals. Animals? What about humans? Forget it. I mean... <clears throat> oh, no! What? Wait, wait, wait. Let me look. Let me look. <coughs> oh, no. He what? He said something about that cough. Oh, it's just a simple cough. No, it's not. It's another symptom for the Barafa virus. You cough twice. Not once or three times. You cough twice. And that's a clear sign of the disease. That's you have, nonsense. You, you have the Barafa virus. It says so right here. So what else does the website say? Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> what? Oh, James. <laughs> what? It says that once the cough sets in, the person only has only, only, oh, only a week to live. I've had enough. You're spending too much time online. Okay. Ready? Yes. Okay. Perfect. Okay, guys. Submit your answers. Okay. Okay, I go Pablo. Okay, I go Carla, Jose, Claudia. Okay. Okay, excellent. I can see that most of you got 100. Okay, 
you can see that you got 80, okay? Perfect. All right, guys, let's move, okay? Let's move and let's take the vocabulary quiz. Vocabulary. There you go. That is the link. And the passcode is English. Okay, so this um, quiz is about vocabulary. You need to type, all right? Yeah, tiene que digitar, usted va a digitar. Um, this is about job professions, okay? Of course, there could be more than one answer, correct, all right? But try to guess the word in this case, okay? The most common word that you remember about that profession. Okay, so let me know once you are done. You have the description and you need to add the profession. Okay, let's see. Okay, the ones that already finished, we are going to practice speaking for about 15 minutes, okay? So open the class and let's start with the speaking. Let me see, okay. Um, okay. Mm 
difference. Teacher, I am driving. Go home. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Dice, en la prueba yo le puse punto a, a todos. Ah, yes, yes. Ok. Quality. Would be better have quality or quantity? Um, I prefer quality because um, wait, with quality can I is something can I use and quantity um maybe is something that. I never use because um it didn't it don't it don't it, it don't it it's don't functional for me. It's not functional for me. Yes, I prefer quality too. For me it's very important. Uh, more important than quantity quantity. Mm -hmm. For me, for me, depending of, of model of business, uh, I think, I think. Okay. Mm -hmm. Next, do you mind paying extra for better quality? Um, In... in my case, uh, uh, it depends. An example is, um, I bought a, I bought a, a wash machine, a washing machine, and they gave me an uh, extra. What do you say? Warranty. An extra warranty for uh, an extra paying. And it means that I could have, besides the warranty, uh, for maintenance for the equipment. And for me, it was a perfect. Yeah, I think so. Me too. <laughs> uh, which country produces top quality goods? Ooh. Mm. Uh. I don't know this true, but China, for example, I hear something that 
uh, it has uh, three types of quality. A, B, and C. Okay. Uh, I don't know this true. <laughs> mm. <laughs> it's supposed the countries <laughs> to produce top quality goods are the United States, um, Germany, China, oh, Germany. Russia. Japan? No. Yeah, Japan. And so India. Korea? Oh, India. Mm -hmm. India. Yeah, India. Uh, and depends on the stuff, stuff uh, Spain. No. Um, when was the last time something disappointed you because of its poor quality? Well, um, I I remember um, two or three years ago, we bought uh, a kitchen. And I, in this moment, I say uh, to my wife um, that both in this uh, kitchen because the price is lower. And and uh, I remember uh, during one year or less, and we need to change uh, in this this product. Yeah. Um. And she said in this moment, "Don't don't both because I I don't know this." This mark, yes, and Boyfriend? yeah, and yeah, for example, she both in the same time, she both a refrigerator or freezer, and right now, um, is it's so good. In the kitchen during a, only one year. Yes, I I don't remember how to say, uh, but I think that I I I both um uh, something <laughs> that I don't remember what in that moment in this moment. Okay. I have a similar case with my refrigerator because I bought one about three years ago and the warranty was for one year and one month after the warranty of uh, the refrigerator doesn't uh, funcion and I nobody can't to repair them to repair it and i lost my money mm -hmm. to, to fix it right. yeah yes no nobody couldn't repair it yes mm -hmm. i have to buy other one. Oh my god okay <laughs> yes okay so bad what comes to mind when you hear the term quality of life? Uh -huh. So quality of life is basically a calidad de vida. Yeah. Right? yeah. So what is quality of life for you? Uh, we can yeah we can we can study we can work and we can live um with uh with food with health with uh service and 
that we can paint, paint everything. <laughs> and we can save money too for buy it. To buy? For for to buy or of or for buying? For buying. Um this is something that we need. Yes. Mm, okay. Okay. And what do you think, George? What is quality of life for you? Well, I, I, um, I think that many, many things, for mm -hmm. example, uh, when I have, um, if, if I have uh, security, it, um, I, I, have um um uh I don't know a good work at uh, my family lives and uh, uh with a place with the more opportunities mm -hmm. and my my sons have a study and quality and in your education and we have uh, a lot of opportunity for for the for the lift for mm -hmm. yeah and we can uh, I don't know travel for the other countries oh, mean, to, to the yeah, other yes. Okay, that is quality. Okay, yes, and that is true. Okay, and for you, Kenya, what what is quality of life? I'm not sure, but for me, I think when you have your family together and with health is very mm -hmm. important. And other thing is the attitude when you see the life because you are negative. All things. It will be bad for you, but if you are a positive, you join the scenes with love and you enjoy the moment. Yes. Okay. I think that quality of life depends on on uh on each person, right? Because yeah, sometimes um quality of life could be traveling to a different country right or or having enough money to buy different things or to have uh, our family together right or to not be as stressful right mm -hmm. to be at peace right mm -hmm. etc okay very good okay continue with the other ones we are almost done okay what are the indicators of quality life? I think that one of them is happiness. Yes. Happiness, right. Another one, peace. Health. Health, right. Yes. Security, Security right. Yes, that is correct. Mm. What opportunities? Yes, mm. opportunities. Uh -huh. Quality educations? Yes. Education. Good, uh -huh. Excellent. Yes, that is correct. And can money buy quality of life? Um, yes, I think. Yes. Yeah. Of course, right? Because money is necessary. Yes. Mm -hmm. Now, um, in who has a better quality of life? What do you think, in your opinion, a student or a worker? Depends. <laughs> For, it depends. And <laughs> the. Uh, those are different uh, parts in your life. Mm 
Okay. Because when you, uh, for example, when I was a student, um, mm -hmm. I, I was happy, yes, and because uh, I enjoy with my partners and go to the many uh, uh, sites and I go to the parties and I went. I don't know, yeah. Yeah. But when I uh, start to work, the responsibility is the other one. Yeah. But if uh, I don't know, uh, I am happiness right now. Yes, because uh, I I so happy when my family is so good. When my sons um, uh, take a, a good results in your studies. Mm -hmm. uh, when I take um, uh, the other opportunity in my work and uh, it's, uh, it's depend for me it's depend but mm -hmm. when you work you can buy the different things uh, when you work uh, the company pays for your work and you can mm -hmm. um, obtain the, the, the other things and uh, but is most important for your your for your life okay you can obtain the other things uh, than when you study uh, you can you can take one okay all right yes i think that well it depends right because as you said those are two different uh probably times in your life and it all depends right uh well okay let's go back to the main room because we are almost done with our class okay let's go yeah okay Okay, guys, so we are almost done with our class. Uh, Vladimir, are you there? Yes, teacher. Thank you. Vladimir, uh, let me ask you, okay, can money buy quality of life? Repeat, please. Yeah, can money buy quality of life? Can money buy your happiness? Can money buy your peace? Uh, yeah, I think you're parking. I no, I don't think. Yeah, no. two hundred dollars. Okay, yeah, I think you're busy. Okay, yeah, I think that you're busy, Vladimir. Um, okay. Jose, what about you? Can money buy quality of life? If we talked of products, yes, teacher. Uh, okay. If the Quality is higher. the 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 price is higher. Mm -hmm. Okay, but what is for you quality of life, Jose? Uh, it depends what we are talking now. <laughs> <laughs> okay, <laughs> all right. But for you, what is? I mean, in general, okay, in general. Mm. Uh, I don't know how to say it, but uh, if we talk about people, uh, money can be make easier to have a better quality of life, and we talk about products too. Okay, well, it depends, right? I mean, well, quality of life is probably, we were discussing with your classmates that probably could be happiness, right? Health, right? Or it could be going to another country, etc. There are many things, but okay. okay. Uh, Maris, are you there? Yeah, teacher. Okay, 
Guys, so right now we are going to stop right here just because of the time. Thank you very much for joining and being responsible. I hope you have a great weekend, rest, and I'll see you back on Monday. Okay, take care. Maurice, please stay with me. All right, bye bye. Guys. Take care. Bye, teacher. Bye. Bye. Good night, guys. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Thank you, Daisy. Mm. All right, Maurice, how are you? How do you feel, Maurice? I'm fine. You're fine. I'm fine. Yes. Okay. So, um, Maurice, we are going to have the feedback time. Yeah. Yeah. So today, I would like to know about you. Okay. I would like to know about you. Yeah. I would like to know about your learning process. Yes. Quiero saber acerca de su proceso de aprendizaje. ¿Cómo ha sido? Si ha sido con nosotros desde básico o si ha estudiado anteriormente en algún otro lugar donde se imparte el idioma inglés o es esta la primera vez que usted se une a nosotros, eh, etc. Eh, empecé el curso desde el número 3 básico. Ok. Eh, si he estado en otros lugares. Ajá. Sí, pero inestablemente okay. por cuestión de trabajo. Okay. Entonces he tenido que estar suspendiendo, pues me sorbía mucho tiempo el, el trabajo. Sí. Eh, pero ahí vamos queriendo aprender, pues me meto a internet, a YouTube, a queriendo aprender okay. con ciertos personajes que salen ahí y que enseñan. Sí. Entonces he querido ser autodidacta, pero no es suficiente. O sea, necesito un profesor que dé orientación. Entonces, los he tenido y han sido muy buenos, okay. forma, incluyendo a usted, que no ha terminado el curso. Okay. Pero siento que me hace falta un poquito más de desarrollarme, porque sí. no sé si le quiere que le diga en inglés. <ríe> Como usted prefiera, como usted se sienta más cómodo. Porque cuando yo tengo visitas y recibo muchas visitas, yo soy gerente de producción, uh -huh. recibo visitas de coreano. Entonces, pero cuando yo, ellos me visitan la planta, yo siento fácilmente, o oh, porque estamos hablando de lo, de lo mismo, quizás nos entendemos y los, y los entiendo. Pero cuando ya quiero socializar, uh -huh. está un poquito más, porque quizás el aspecto inglés técnico lo manejo con ellos. ¿verdad? Sí. Entonces, por el nombre de ciertos eh, procesos que hay, yo se lo puedo explicar aquí libremente. Sí. Pero cuando yo quiero am ampliar una conversación que no sea del trabajo, uh -huh. es socializar y todo eso, yo siento que ahí se me traban las carretas. Ok. Ok. Um, bien. Ok. Ahora, eh, ¿cómo has sentido estas dos semanas que hemos estado en clases nosotros? O sea, ¿qué le ha parecido las clases del módulo intermedio? Um, quiero saber su experiencia. Me, me ha gustado, pero este, con respecto a los listeners, me ha gustado, pero ahí estoy tratando de agudizar el oído porque ese es importante también. Sí. Y me está costando un poquito. Pero de ahí por algunas palabras que usted menciona y todo eso, sí voy entendiendo. Ok. Entonces pienso que necesito esforzarme un poquito más, dedicarle un poquito más de tiempo para... Puede ir mejorando. Ok, Maris. Sí, fíjense de que en realidad, eh, si se ha dado cuenta, el módulo intermedio 1 es básicamente, es un poquito tal vez más intenso en el sentir que es eh, full inglés, ¿verdad? Es bien poco el español sí. que se utiliza. Sí. Eh, Primeramente porque es intermedio uno y pues los demás intermedios eh, serán igual, ¿verdad? Donde el profesor tiene que hablar solamente sí. inglés. Entonces, eh, es bien importante mencionar que el cambio obviamente se ha sentido, ¿verdad? Se ha sentido sí, tal vez sí, el sí. cambio y a veces eso es lo que 
nos damos cuenta y decimos, ok, estoy ahora tal vez en una clase full inglés y siento que sí, debo de prepararme un poquito más. Okay. Pero qué bueno que sea así, porque así usted se da cuenta que en realidad tenemos que, ¿verdad? Esforzarnos un poquito más y dedicarle tal vez un poquito más de tiempo al idioma cuando no estemos en clase o cuando usted tenga la oportunidad de escuchar algo en inglés, de leer algo en inglés, de escribir algo en inglés, no la desperdicie porque la okay. oportunidad le ayuda a usted a practicar, ¿sí? Ahora Una anécdota. Uh -huh. Una anécdota, este, por ejemplo, cuando me toca exponer a los sí. otros gerentes acerca de la situación de mi planta, el gerente general me dice, Mori, en inglés, please. entonces eh, se va a equivocar, equivóquese. Entonces, eh, y siento que en parte en el trabajo, siento que... Me están queriendo ayudar. Sí, eh, y eso es lo, lo ideal. Uh -huh. sí, entonces, y, y, y están queriendo aprender un poquito más. Ok, Maris. Sí, bien. Eh, en realidad, pues, eh, creo que eso lo que usted me comenta es súper bueno porque ellos le están dando apoyo. Y creo que el sí. sentirse, pues, apoyado, usted también se, se va un poco como abriendo, ¿verdad? Un poquito más. Entonces, eh, Maris, bueno, primeramente mencionar y agradecerle que siempre, pues, participe en las clases, ¿verdad? Y creo que eso es lo más importante, ya que la motivación de aprender el idioma lo tiene. Tiene la, las ganas, tiene la motivación de aprenderlo y creo que eso es lo más importante, ya que en ocasiones tal vez eh, lo hacemos forzadamente, ¿verdad? Forzadamente y cuando uno lo hace forzadamente, lastimosamente el proceso de aprendizaje es más lento, es más lento sí. por el hecho de que uno no está porque uno quiere, ¿verdad? Entonces, eh, primero felicitarlo y darle las gracias porque participa bastante. ¿Verdad? Continúe sí. haciéndolo, continúe haciéndolo, ya que de esa manera usted va a aprender, va a quitarse ese miedo al equivocarse, va a aprender a cómo sí. pronunciar, eh, va a aprender vocabulario nuevo, se le va a quedar porque va a ir practicándolo día a día. Entonces, eso es bien importante que usted pues lo mantenga y que no se le olvide que la motivación siempre tiene que estar ahí. ¿Verdad? Eh, también agradecerle por la responsabilidad que tiene, porque es muy responsable siempre, Maris, está a tiempo, ¿verdad? Entonces, eso es muy importante. Eh, luego, pues, recordemos que el proceso, el proceso de aprendizaje a veces es lento para algunos y es más rápido para otros, ¿verdad? Así es. Pero media vez usted vaya avanzando y usted diga, ok, estoy aprendiendo. ¿Sí? Si usted está aprendiendo, eso es lo más importante. No importa si es lento o si es rápido, pero lo importante es que aprenda. Que al final de este módulo, usted diga, ok, si sí, yo aprendí, aprendí eso, se me quitó el miedo, se me quitó la pena. Pude hablar en, eh, en frente de la clase y, y lo hice, a pesar que me equivoqué, pero lo hice. Ok, entonces uh -huh. eso es básicamente pues lo que eh, yo quiero que usted eh, trate de participar un poquito más cuando Bien. sea de hablar eh, por un minuto, ¿verdad? Cuando yo pida voluntarios, por un minuto, okay. sí, usted participe. Y lo otro, también pues eh, ya verifique y usted ya terminó la plataforma, ¿verdad? Sí. Entonces, eso, eh, gracias también porque ya con usted, pues ya básicamente la plataforma está ya finalizada. Ok, entonces eso, eh, gracias Maurice por ser tan responsable. No sé si tiene alguna pregunta en este momento, alguna duda, algo que usted quiera saber. Sí, siempre yo sí tengo, bueno, preguntas. Todos los dichos que he tenido anteriormente. Sí. Me he sentido aquella confianza y libertad de preguntarle. Sí. ¿Cómo puedo hacer para aprender más? Sí. Entonces los otros teachers me han, me han dicho, eh, lea cuentos de niño, lea esto, lea el otro. Eh, muchos convergen uh -huh. a, lo, a lo mismo. Entonces yo siento, digo yo, tomando y escuchando lo que me dicen, pues ya que ustedes pasaron por eso mismo, aprendieron, eh, 
deben de tener la razón, pues en ese caso, pues así estoy. Por ejemplo, no sé qué piensa usted con el, yo estoy, estoy trabajando aquí con el, después de esto, estoy con el Duolingo, no sé qué piensa usted de eso, Sí, un mire. programa de, de aprender. Sí, es una aplicación, creo yo, ¿verdad? Sí, Bien. sí, sí. Eh, yo le aconsejo que, sí, esa aplicación es muy buena. Eh, todo suma, ¿ok? Todo lo que usted haga, todo suma. Ahora, Si usted quiere aprender, tal vez, eh, si usted quiere aprender eh, vocabulario funcional, vocabulario que a usted le va a servir el día a día, yo no le voy a recomendar que lea, eh, tal vez, artículos que no va a utilizar en su día a día. Le puedo recomendar que usted trate de hacer, por ejemplo, eh, su rutina diaria, ¿sí? Trate de aprenderse de memoria porque el inglés usted lo va repitiendo y repitiendo y repitiendo y repitiendo en su mente, eh, hablado y se le va quedando. Entonces, lo primero que usted tiene que hacer es hablar con usted mismo porque lastimosamente en ocasiones no tenemos a alguien más con quien practicar. Entonces, usted lo que tiene que hacer es practicar con usted mismo. Por ejemplo, ok, si este día me, me saludan, ¿cómo voy a saludar yo? ¿Y qué más puedo preguntarle a esa persona? Puedo decirle, hi, good morning. How are you? How are you doing? Y usted empieza a grabarse esas eh, frases y palabras que va a ser un lenguaje funcional de día a día. Claro está que, acuérdese que el inglés es extenso, pero lo que necesitamos es que usted lo hable, que usted pueda tener una conversación. Entonces, ¿qué va a hacer? Va a estudiar cosas que lo ayuden a mantener una conversación. Entonces, lo que puede hacer es eso. Ahora, cuando usted se levante, desde que usted se levante, tiene que comenzar y va a decir, ok, ¿qué haré este día? Voy a describir las cosas que voy a hacer este día en inglés. Y es obvio que en algún momento usted se va a topar con alguna palabra que no sabe, ¿verdad? Pero usted tiene que seguir y recordarse de esa palabra que no sabe cómo se dice y buscarla después. Para que después cuando al siguiente día, porque hay cosas que hacemos repetidamente, uh -huh. sí, entonces sí, se va a acordar y ya sabe la palabra. Y así va a ir y va a ver que su fluidez y su retentiva va a mejorar. pero tiene que hacerlo todos los días. Cuando se vaya a acostar, lo mismo. Cuando se vaya a acostar, puede empezar a preguntar, ok, ¿qué hice ahora? Mm, today I went to work, I ate chicken. No es necesario que diga todo, sino que, que diga frases, uh -huh. ¿verdad? Entonces, yeah. y después diga, ¿qué haré mañana? Y empieza a describir qué va a hacer mañana. Y así va a ver que va a ir mejorando poco a poco. Ok, haga eso de conversar con usted mismo porque eso es lo, uh, tal vez algo bien esencial que no hacemos y que solo pues tal vez practicamos con la aplicación o leemos, pero ¿qué pasa? Porque el, el lenguaje no, no se nos va a transferir de ahí mismo, o sea, de una aplicación que la tenemos aquí, no, tenemos que practicarlo para que usted sí, se le sí. quede. Uh -huh. Entonces... Sí, aquí me, eh, perdón, este... Con respecto a mi familia, son bilingües, con mis hijos yo los creé y los mandé a, a la escuela americana, se tardaron su tiempo, se graduaron, me hicieron el top, ¿no? ¿Qué? Sí. y bueno, como uno en los tiempos de antes, pues solo trabajo, 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 y en aquel tiempo hasta lo ocupaban ocupaba uno en la noche, y, pero ellos me ayudan, mis hijos. Va, entonces, Así me dije, hablemos, hablemos, me dije, hablemos. Y ellos me corrigen, me corrigen. Y me, incluso me dicen ellos, mira, me dije, así como nos enseñaste la, a, a nosotros, que nos fregaste, ahorita vamos a fregar nosotros. Ahora, <risa> ahora me toca a ellos. Sí, no, pero, en verdad, mami tiene un buen eh, apoyo ahí, en su familia. Sí, sí. Así que aprovechelo, ¿ok? hable con ellos, que lo corrijan y, y trate de hacerlo todos los días, todos los días. ¿Sí? Gracias por el consejo, Tisha. Ok, Maris, un, un gusto. Muy agradecido. Okay.
Ok, un gusto. Bien, Maurice, eso era básicamente lo que yo pues tenía que eh, preguntarle ese día. ¿verdad? Quería saber más que todo su opinión acerca de todas las clases que hemos tenido y bueno, nada más agradecerle nuevamente la responsabilidad que ha tenido durante esas dos semanas. ¿Ok? Yes, Bien. Ok, so I'll see you back on Monday and I hope you have a great weekend on the beach. ¿Ok? So okay. take care. All right. Bye-bye, okay. Maurice. Okay. Take care. Okay. Good night. Good night.